this is Richard, the electrical supervisor, and hey, Richard. the electricians. Hey. And Hi. Morgan. Morgan. So this is our lot? Oh, I haven't seen him. He must be tied up somewhere, sorry. It's all good. Yeah. Now, I'm a simple salesman, so keep in mind that you guys are probably going to know some stuff that I don't. But the idea is to back up the product with, with you know, that we supply your product and we want to do training to help you with it. If I don't have the answers, because I am but a simple salesman, uh, I'll find out the answers for you. Um, you guys on the electrical side, have you used the, have you looked at the 282 yet at all? Um, no, not recently. Okay. Well, let me start at the beginning. So I'll just call them in. This is what we bought for the to replace the CCP thermometer that we used. You know the one that's built with the RT200. Oh, yep, yep. Yeah. So this one is um, yeah. The RT200 we've got just started to go on the zero point unstable. Is that the old um, the made in Wellington? The old yeah, yeah. I remember those. Yeah, we got we're, we're the museum for them. We've got three. Wow. We had three. One went. One's gone, but we've still got two. About a million years ago, you won't even know them, so you got, you're too young, but Mike might know. Um, David <laughs> Reed Electronics. <laughs> Do you remember David Reed Electronics? Well, you've got the same snow on the ceiling as me. <laughs> sorry, am I, am I being Mike's sorry? laughing the inside, he's not. He's, he's... Oh, hey, you, would you like a hug? Sorry, <laughs> um, David Reed Electronics, we used to sell some precision resistors for those, for DSIR, who made those, uh, those uh, thermometers. Uh, yeah, after 200, uh, right? Before my time in this country. Yeah, you're from the home country, yeah. Uh, from uh, Wales, up towards Wales? Um, oh, that's <laughs> You've got a bit of a lilt, I'm trying to pick it. I've many years in Wales. Yeah, country, country, just wanted past the south. 13 years in. Oh, okay. Well, I, 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 I lived in Western Sydney. <laughs> okay, because I pride myself as a bit of an anglophile, so I try and pick accents when I can. So, right, so what I'll do is I'll start at the beginning as if you've not seen the thing and to give you a yeah, basic overview. We've got 20 minutes. Pardon me? We've got 20 minutes. Oh, okay, I'll be quick then. <laughs> yeah, in this room, otherwise we'll, we'll, we'll get kicked talk. out. Okay, so what it is is a precision laboratory level instrument, but it's portable. Now, this is the one that Aiden and, and, and co carry around. You can see it's dirty and, and cruddy as all hell. It's IP67, but keep in mind, this is probably similar accuracy to what it's replacing. I can't remember what the specs were on those. Uh, but it, the basic accuracy on this thing, on resistance, is 25 parts per million. On voltage, it's 50 parts per million. On um, its basic RTD accuracy is 0 0.0015 degrees C. So it's accurate as all get up. Um, but what's different to a lab style thermometer normally is that it's portable and it's IP67. It is truly something you can take in the field and use around there without, you know, we've got a we've got an Acumac in our lab, in our calibration lab, but you'd never take it out. It's in a plastic case, it sits on the shelf. Yeah. This thing, Aiden and the boys take it around all over the place. Now it's two, almost three inputs. The reason I say it's almost three, I don't know why it's not focused very well. Um, is that you've got two thermocouple sockets and two smart plugs. But the third channel is a math channel. So you can have three channels displayed, you can have A minus B. No. Which is ideal perhaps in your calibration lab because you can go, you know, a probe under test, reference probe, uh, and you can look at the difference, mm. which is quite nice. Um, it will take kind of everything in terms of, of thermometry. Um, thermocouples, it takes all the thermocouples you could think of, including some of the weird ones you probably have never come across, like a Type C. I've never seen a Type C thermocouple in my life. Um, and all the exotic ones, like your Type R's and Type S, you know, the platinum rhodium type that you'd use on furnaces and the like. So it, it takes everything. It takes two different sorts of uh, PRT, they, they tend to use the term SPRT or a secondary reference PRT. These are a smart plug. When you buy a, well, I'll try and be techy about it. You know, when you buy a very fancy calibration probe, it comes with calibration data on it. Probably more these guys than you guys, but sometimes if you buy a, a top end probe, it'll come with either CVD, Calidad Van Dusen, or ITS 90 
data where it, where somebody like MSL has gone through and given it coefficients for A, B, C, D, E. And the beauty of, of the smart plug is that there is a chip in here that stores that data. So that um, if you plug in a smart pro, like probably that one is, it'll come up and say serial number ABC 12345. So you instantly have all the, uh, the CBD and, or ITS or smart probe data in the device. If you don't have, um, if you're using conventional probe, this is what's called a 9072. As it comes, it's got four uh, alligator clips on the end. So you can cock it up to ordinary probes. Oh, yes. yep. uh, so in our case, we've just put a, a three pin cannon socket on it. Not three pins, it's a five pin, I lied to you already. Um, and plug it in. And we've programmed this one to say this is this, and if I was to plug it in, it would come up and tell us what it is. And so if you don't have those coefficients in there? You can put them in manually. But if you don't have them in, you'll read a lot of error. No, it will still be, it'll still be super good. It'll be better than the best thermometer you've ever used. It'll just be reading as a standard RTD. Right. Yep. So they call them, in Anatel speak, they have PSRTs or precision SPRT, secondary precision reference thermometers, which will have those that data, the ITS90 and or CBD, uh, or the Smart Pro from Acumac. Uh, Acumac have a tie-in with Anatel, by the way, that's why they supply those. Uh, but if you use it with just an industrial RTD, fine. I'm just trying to work out the error. So if you didn't have your ITS 90 values in there, the coefficients, mm. how much error would you roughly see? Because we do that for our DMXs. They've got them built in, same as a smart chip. Yes. Um, but we've got some other probes in the cupboard, which I want to put some plugs on and enter the coefficients. What if you didn't enter those coefficients in? It'll still give you a really good, if it doesn't read yep. any data, it'll just give you a really good standard industrial, what they would call an industrial. industrial not, not accurate data. enough to be that's a question that's above my pay grade yeah. actually I'll, I'll ask the question I think it would be I mean your basic yeah, accuracy it's the only question I've really got that I'm still trying to find an answer to is how, well, yeah. how important is this coefficient data I don't think super I'll give you my opinion and then I'll get it verified because the basic accuracy is 0 0.015 yeah. degrees without a probe and 25 parts per million on resistance, mm. it's gonna be shit hot, yeah, even yeah. with a standard PD100. Now I realize that shit hot is not an SI unit, so you'll need to <laughs> determine you know, what yeah. is okay for you, but I think you're gonna find it's gonna be it any be be easy enough to test. So you've got one here with the coefficient in it, stick yeah. it in measure it, yeah. and then you stick it in a standard one and see what your differences are. Yes, is that a smart probe, that one's got the coefficients in it? Yeah. Exactly so, you, you, you're quite right. Mm -hmm. uh, Morgan, wasn't it? Uh, Richard. Just Richard, just sorry. Right. Drug, uh, cocaine's a hell of a drug. Right? <laughs> um, yeah, no, you're quite right. And what you can do, in fact, that's, that's a, 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 a standard calibration as they describe in their manual. You could lock a single smart probe to channel one. You could say, with a password, so if you've got the junior doing it, you could say, channel one is always going to be that smart probe locked with a password and then compare it against the other probes under test. But you're, you're exactly right, Richard. You've exactly described how you would do it. So we would do that then plus ECPs because we're going to send that to you and sell to get calibrated. Yep. And we'll just lock it to, if you can show us how to do that today, later. Yep. Because then we can just, no one can go to the second one and actually use the second one as the, yep. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, right. it does come with an IAM certificate, but obviously the MSL is that next level. Yeah, we've um, our procedures say MSL. Yeah, which is great. I mean, they're the and we had a look at those on. certificates, and we couldn't find any correction unless we worked it out backwards from the resistance table. Sure. Well, you can't go wrong with the MSL. Yeah. So if you look at if we look at the what some of the buttons, if we look at the sensor library, for example, on this one, so here's your list of uh, standard. So you've got. CBD, ITS smart or standard, or even custom RTDs and standard thermocouples. If I went to smart, that serial number is the serial number of the one that Aiden would use when he comes here, for example. 
I didn't, haven't got that one with me. Yeah. But as soon as he plugs that one in, it will see that serial number. Now, if you have what, what is called a 9072, that with the four uh, alligator clips, have you got those? Could you get one of those? They're an extra, they don't come with. But only that lead they've got with the demon swamp. Remember that goes as extra leads? Mm -hmm. If you imagine that plug, it's a limo out of Germany and it's got four um, alligator clips on it. You can then clip it onto a four wire conventional. Mm, like that, yeah. And then they have another one that's like if you want to get that pro calibrated by MSL, quite apart from the 282, there's a version that has a female version of this to bear wires or to, to spades. So that you could, if you said, I want the 282 calibrated, but I want the, the custom pro calibrated too, mm -hmm. unless they have a 282, they can't read the smart plug. But the other one, which is called a 9071, is a female of that to four spades. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. 9071. 9071 and 9072 is the other way. 9072 is the same plug going to four alligator clubs. Yeah. I can send you pricing if you like on those. Yes. Make notes as I go. 9072, 9071. That added up, bro. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, you could almost certainly make it yourself if you bought the Lima yeah. connector and, and it would be a lot cheaper, I would think. Uh, lower cost, you know, of course, it's HE. Yeah, yeah. Um, the editor. The editor, you'll pay for them putting it together and their name and stuff. But yeah. Okay. So if we look at how it works, let's take a thermocouple by way of example. Standard thermocouple. Do we all know about thermocouples and cold junction, a uh, cold junction correction? Run over it. I just use your whiteboard if I may. Um, but the lie we tell people because it's easy is that if you have two dissimilar metals and you heat it supposed to be a flame, you get a tiny millivolt here. Yeah. It ain't true. <laughs> what actually you have, the, so Mr. Seebeck came up with the principle of having two different metals. This end was in a bucket of ice. This end was to the heat. Then you produce the millivolt. It's the gradient between those two. Now obviously we don't carry a bucket of ice around with us with our, with our thermocouple thermometers. So they electronically simulate a cold junction correction. So you'll see on some of these uh, thermometers that you have your CJC, cold junction correction. Um, so that's it's not a lie, it's a white lie. We tell people to make it easy to understand, yeah. but that's the truth. So this is done electronically, so it's important that you have the accuracy of your CJC as well. The accuracy, the accuracy, I should not drink it back there, of the CJC on the 282 0 0.15 degrees C. So if you wanted a better cold junction correction, you can choose an external cold junction correction and use channel one with a really good reference probe as your cold junction in an ice bath. So you know when you make up an ice slurry, yeah. um, you can make up an ice slurry. If you, if you wanted a thermocouple to the nth degree, I'll show you how to do it. You could go to Here's where I show my ignorance, so I'll get it wrong, but never mind. So if I plug the thermocouple into channel two, around the right way, <coughs> and we go to thermometer. Now, I'll go through the basics of setting it up, which I'm sure you've worked out already for yourself. That warning is telling us that we're selected PD100 on channel two, and obviously it's not seeing what it thinks it should. So we'll turn off channel one, for sake of argument, and on channel two, we're gonna change it. It's all touch screen, as you probably worked out, to a thermocouple. At the moment, it's set to type K, but if I touch on the K, we can set it to any one of 50 million different thermocouples, including the bare millivolts, which is quite nice. Mm -hmm. Incidentally, when you have it up on screen normally, you will see both the temperature and the millivolts. So I'm not quite sure why I'm not seeing that at this moment, but I'll come back to that. Oh, while we're there, 
So this is your setter. You can adjust the fine tuning. So K-type thermocouple, the resolution. Normally, you're not gonna have any better than 0.1 resolution on a thermocouple, but you might for some reason, especially if you're using something fancy like an R or an S or something. So you could make that, you know, point zero one if you wanted to. And here's your cold, uh, cold junction compensation. So at the moment, it's set to internal. And there's two things you can do. You can either, now this is where it's lost in translation just slightly, external means you're putting in a figure. So you have measured the temperature where you're working and it's exactly you know 19.3, so you put in that temperature. Um, what I would call external is what they call custom. So if you go to custom, oops, custom, and if we, so at the moment it's set to a standard PT100385. You know that term, PT100385? 0.385 ohms per degree, it increases. PT100 is zero at, uh, at 100 ohms at zero. So yeah, you could, if you wanted to, put a calibrated probe into channel one and use that as your cold junction reference. Pretty cool. It's pretty, it's pretty awesome. I don't think you'd have to do it often, no. but you might. Probably just the boilers, we have to. Because normally you're looking at a, a resolution that isn't necessarily that hot. On, 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 on thermocouples, as you know, they're not normally that super accurate at the best of times. Let's change that to an RTD so we don't get it beeping at us all the time. All right, damage probes on thermocouples. A couple of damaged ones, yeah. Uh, let me just check that cold junction setting that I told you. Current, yes, it is 0 0.1. Fuzzle minus 0 0.15 is the cold junction correction on. Sorry. Weekly catch up with population D. Okay. Um, data logging. It's got really great data logging on there, which also is fantastic for doing your calibrations or doing your work in the field with you guys, you know. Um, so it's as simple as going to, the home screen is your savior. If you get lost, just hit the home button, take you back here. With the data logger, you create a, uh, a, a new setup that you want. I don't know why the focus is so crap, sorry about that. Let's create a new uh, test, and we're gonna do it with a, Thermocouple. I'll put it in channel one so it's not going to beep at us all day long. Can we just data lock them all day CCP or that week? So we've got an industrial thermocouple on channel A. We'll make it whatever color we want to make it for our chart. Um, oh, that you can see now it's reading 0 0.031 millivolts, which if you look up a thermocouple table, you can see that a K type at that temperature is that. And then you hit the play button to make it stop, to, to go to the next step. And we can set the logging interval. The shortest is half a second. The longest is kind of whatever you want. Um, I hear you ask, how many memories does it have, Greg? Good question. 100 million. Sample points. Uh, yeah. So to, to put it in another SI unit, shitloads. You've got years of data. You know, a million, several million is a big number. So we're at half a second, let's make it... Uh, let's grow half a second. One second, for example. We wanna have 25 samples, and we go start. And I go, eh, 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 eh. And that's just, that's any value, resistance, millivolts, that that thing can be. Yeah. Yeah, okay. just whatever you, on that setup screen, yeah. we just set up whatever you wanted it to be. So I've just used the thermocouple because it can respond quickly to my fingers. There's the, there it's done. What's under there? Uh, not used in this case. Don't pull it off then. You won't hurt it. <laughs> uh, it's got a couple of sockets there. I believe it's... What's the USB in here? Well, there's a USB at the bottom. There's USB-C at the bottom along with... Um, the power, the power, the charging the battery. Yeah, the top 
originally was for pressure that they didn't go with in the end. And I don't know if that's going to be a later feature or not. Um, so we would then go to that, you set it up, call it what you want to call it. Not mum, I meant Monday. That was a Freudian slip, wasn't it? Operator. I know I did to jail at reception. Tick. And there we are, we've saved that there. And we can call it up. And again, you know, talking about that system we had before where we had, if we had two probes in there, we'd have a graph showing two. Yeah. If you were doing a, a, a probe under test exactly as Richard said, Richard, yes, as, as Richard said, you could have the probe under test on one channel and channel one locked on, on the other probe and you'd see the difference on the graph. How did you bring up that third math channel? Uh, I'm glad you asked me that because I can't remember. I was thinking, oh, don't ask me that, don't ask me that. Yeah, hang on, oh, we'll bring it up. Oh, there, temperature differential. So on that so home screen, temperature differential, I'll plug in this one into the other channel. So you can put your, um, your edit down one from your face. Good one. Mm. And you just use it against that reference. So if we go channel two minus channel one for sake of argument, we better check it set so, up correctly. So if we're going to start testing our kit in house, yeah. obviously I'd, you'd test against this essentially, stick it in an ice bath or, a, yeah. or anything, I guess. And so channel one, we've got a thermocouple. Okay. Channel two, we've got an RTD, a standard PTG, a PT100, which for reasons that are slightly beyond me at this moment, oh, there we go, a bad, bad connection. So there's your two channels. We go back to home and we select differential. Enable. And now if we go back, we should, he says, cross fingers. Ta-da! Nice. That's pretty cool. It's awesome, eh? It's just a beast of a machine. Um, what else haven't I told you? Oh, Bluetooth. That is probably the lifesaver for us, to be honest. It is the shiz, man. This is just the greatest ever. We sit in the, you have this in the field. Yeah. By the time you go out, look at the probe reading, and then come back. Yeah. This is the the running. It's basically saying it'd be good for ten meters, though. Yeah. Working seeps, working segregation. Won't work. Uh, no, we're working. D seven. As long as you're close enough. Yeah. yeah it should be. Yeah. Probably won't work in electric pure. Okay, I'm gonna, that's playing silly buggers, I'll bring it over and show you. So there are two programs. On a PC, you use Aditel Land, the same software you use on your Aditel 221. Yeah. On, are you, are you iPhone or dark side? <laughs> good. <laughs> I'm, I'm a good man. Oh. I'm not worthy. Well done. Yeah, precisely that. Um, so, Editel link. Um, have you done that already? You can just do it now. I'll do it really now. Uh, they ask a lot of information. Yeah. They do. Yeah, yeah, they do. Too much information. I don't know why. Chinese? I hope that uh, the factory, yes. Um, I love the CCP personally. <laughs> and I think Jumping yeah. on Great Guys. Yes, indeed. Uh, um, Editel link. Well, you've already worked it out yourself. Yeah, So, yeah, so that's the link to that one, obviously. Uh, Mike's one is linked to, to yours, isn't it? And you can do pretty much all the same things uh, on here that you can do on there. Um, so, and the same deal on the on the PC. I haven't got download. I could download and tell land, and that would also Bluetooth to that. Is that free software? Yeah, for us? free software. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, keeps it room. Oh, hurrah! So you saw the you saw the on screen. Yeah. You can pretty much do everything that you do on there. It's quite smart. What else haven't I told you that I wanted to tell you? Bluetooth. Let's look at my notes here. Oh, so they came out, um, 
They were first released in September 2021. There's been a couple of firmware updates since then. Okay. So Adatel are pretty good at, uh, at updating, which is good to know, because you know how some companies, they drop the product and then, you know, don't update the software. Yeah, I mean, for example, Apple, 10 years of updates. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm being a smart ass now. Um, just bought a new phone, uh, not finding funny. So with the, I'm only yanking your chain, obviously. Um, nothing <laughs> nothing wrong with Android. Like <laughs> um, the basic accuracy, as I said, was 0 0.005. With an Acumac 1760, the basic accuracy is 0.013, because obviously, oh, I preached to the choir, you're calibration guys, but you have to factor in your probe and the instrument. Two so channel then, simulated. Say that again, sorry, you're... You, when you look at your total accuracy, you yep. gotta look at the accuracy of the instrument, yep. which is 0 .05, 0 .005, mm -hmm. and the probe. So the accuracy with the probe and the instrument with one particular probe, which I chose at random, is 0 0.013 of a degree. I think I'll just is double check that for that the answer? That's the total. It's expanded uncertainty. No, I, that's beyond my pay grade. I, I don't know how to work out uncertainty. That's just good, I think plus Alice or minus. Is zero two five. Is it? The RT two hundred. I don't remember the the lab sending me the results from when they went for MSL. Right. Not the certificate, just some results, and they were like, "This is good." Oh, okay. Anyway, it, I'll, I'll look it up and confirm it later. Uh, but yeah, you can put in. So MSL will almost certainly send you back. Yep. CVD or probably ITS 90 coefficients. Yep, yeah. And you'll be able to anchor into those. And... Oh, battery life, typical 16 hours. That's 16 real hours, not, you know, downhill tailwind hours. Um, not iPhone hours. No, yeah. <laughs> you can get a spare battery. I don't think it comes with a spare battery, does it? No. Um, you get a spare battery and you can charge one battery while it's out of there. So if you're doing a lot of work, so 16 hours typically, it's going to be heaps. Would be a bit of a social software, wouldn't it? If your battery was being doing CCPs. Plug it in. You could plug it in, yeah, true. True, but the beauty of the thing is that, um, yeah, CJC, we talked about Bluetooth, we talked about it doesn't have Wi-Fi. It takes photos. Half seconds, the shortest we can do on that sample rate. And as I say, just, Literally, I got quite a shock because you know how expensive they are. When the guys came back from an on site calibration the other day, this was in the back of their vehicle, and you can see it's had a you know, it gets a hard life, it goes around all over the place. They've been out to Westfield at Rolleston, it's been all over the place, and they just chuck it in the car. I'm not recommending it, but hey. It is an instrument you can use with confidence in the field, and it's yeah. IP67, so you can rain on it, you can... It's got it, 500 screenshots, you can save. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. <laughs> Just found it. Okay, well done, you. Um, I think I've covered what I wanted to cover. What else do you guys need to know that I haven't told you? So it does resistance? Yep. All its quantities, so... Uh, millivolts, so it, it mainly it's, it's there to do PT, RTDs, and thermocouples. Well. Well. And yep. within those, it will do millivolts separately. Yep. And it will do resistance separately. Okay. But yeah, it's, it's effectively a thermometer. Well, they call it a display. And as I say, that's just an error to tell you that. Yeah, yeah. Which is quite well, good. Well, definitely tick the boxes. We wanted something that's portable. And the Bluetooth function was a well, well, built into it. You have to buy a probe for it almost, don't you? Yeah. yeah. He just bought that on his own, that's the model, you couldn't do anything. That would be almost, <laughs> not quite useless, but it would be overkill, yeah. Yeah, you, you, you'd need to have a, a, a proper certified probe to make it really sing, yeah. Luckily the probes are cheap. <laughs> <They're not. laughs> what was it, four grand? Yeah, so. Did you not find out till after the event? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Sorry, yeah, the, the, guy, the, the guy that was working with you replaced me and he probably didn't know a lot about this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was probably the, the channel. Ask Aiden about how, how yes. delicate the ceramic ones are. Oh, all good, oh, all good. He came up to the office one day with the ceramic version of this, and he literally just sat down on the desk just as gently as can be, and it went. The stainless steel are much, much better. Yeah. And it was right in front of the boss. It'd be useful just to have ambient temperatures, just, you know, a lot of stuff would be 
Excuse me, it says third round mid term. Yeah. yeah. Just oh. Uh, it doesn't have a separate ambient sensor, no. It's, you've got to make something in there. Other than the cold junction correction, which isn't really a... So, no, no is the answer. Why am I trying to... Like, Sorry, it's 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 it doesn't have an ambient I didn't think it was, but no. I just thought, oh, nothing in the box still. Apart from but yeah, you can... Um, yeah, anyway, here's one I prepared earlier <laughs> for you to give. Oh, we've got heads of those. Oh, okay. Hanging right oh, well, you're looking to get to in the mouth. Thank you. Give the boss. Thank you. So it's just a simple beat thermotrumpet. So, but there we are. Now, you can, now I can say yes, it has <laughs> ambient. Mm. Right, Morgan, Richard, any questions? No, it looks beautiful, smart, good. Now, no, actually, how's it going to hook? So when you're using it, yep. you're going to have your iPad and you're going to enter the results that are on your phone into our system at the time you're doing it. How we had, like, how so you can do that, so you can use it as a calibrator on the CMX. Are you so using it for reference or are you using it as a calibrator? No, just for reference. Reference, oh, okay. So CCP still run how they used to on Axis. So you so still fill on those worksheets. Oh, yeah. yeah, we haven't quite gone away from that. We will go away from it at some point, but we just got the sidewire calibrations done on CMX and then we are entering the data we are running the system in the background, but we just want to run it for a couple more. Yeah, yeah no, all good. At yeah. the moment, store your so, right, so, you, so what are you, I haven't done for a while, ages, I used to, yep. so what are you, what, you're using a BMX now, though, rather than the... Not CCP. Not CCP. CCPs, we still use the RT200. But, but we'll, we'll go to this. Yeah. Yeah, once that, that's, um, MSL runs next week. Oh, and then you're just handwriting it all. So, um... Why don't you get into... You may be able to get some stuff out of that Excel land, you may be able to, can you import into CMX from a CSV file? I should be able to import this, but we've got, that's just on the box. Yeah. Right. I'm thinking more just, you've got iPads now though. Yeah. yeah. Why don't you run your internal one, so rather than it being a paper, paper thing, like your digital one, like just even if they do you a, a template. We've got, we've got Adam CMX files, so we can import those over to the CMX file. We haven't got that system of proof of quality yet. Oh, okay. All right. So once that is, yeah, and, and it's a monster. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, no, sorry, just ignore me. So you can go and see and actually try.